reading from the Gospel of St Matthew, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. When Jesus was born in the village of Bethlehem in Judea, Herod was king. Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and said, Where is the child born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was worried. He brought together the chief priests and teachers of the law of Moses and asked them, Where will the Messiah be born? They told him, He will be born in Bethlehem, just as the prophet wrote. Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, you are very important among the towns of Judea. From your town will come a leader who will be like a shepherd for my people Israel. Herod secretly called in the wise men and asked them when they had first seen the star. He told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. I want to go and worship him too. The wise men listened to what the king said and then left. And the star they had seen in the east went on ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they went into the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, they knelt down and worshipped him. They took out their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh and gave them to him. Later, they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod and they went back home by another road. Lumpy, lumpy, I called it, though its owner said it was ass or banipal, flashy handle, if you ask me for a utility vehicle. It was like sitting on a bag of loose cobbles. Grumpy, too. Spitting and biting were his star turns. Bolt and Melchior's camels, they were well behaved, easy riders, but mine... Foreign travel was not usually part of my job. We were astronomers, diviners, priests, not adventurers. But for a once-in-a-lifetime event, well, maybe several lifetimes, we'd been studying for years, poring over our illuminated charts. Such a phenomenon, the coming together of three celestial bodies looking like one magnificent, massive star, had to be significant. We'd consulted age-old prophecies, done all the calculations and research. That great light proclaimed a greater king's birth. It was from beyond, bigger than human making. It was exciting! But then Balthazar said we must go and pay our respects. Were we not seekers? Not of the how, but the why. Now I'm a good age. They're even older. Wise, they call us. Probably for not perching on some miserable old camel for weeks on end. Trekking to God knows where. I so hoped he did. That amazing star led us, though, you see. Well, unless you travelled at night, you didn't see. It was nearly winter. A cold coming we'd have. It was freezing. Heading southwest out of our country, I suspected we might attract the wrong sort of attention. Quite a sight, cooks and servants and armed security for our three precious gifts. We didn't look like traders, so we avoided the cities and major trade routes and Roman roads. Camels, though. Ships of the desert. Ideal for off-roading. Even if mine wallowed and bucked like some clapped-out old ferry. We slept mostly during daylight, with one eye open. Our mission was harmless, but... Navigating mainly by the stars, we'd reached Jerusalem before things got <laughs> hairy. Spies started shadowing us. 
Herod's guard, seemingly. And then, just after we'd made camp one morning, up rides an envoy with his minders. I tried to look relaxed. After another lumpy night, I was just shattered. Didn't like the look of Herod's gopher either. Well, well, he's no diplomat. But Melchior charmingly explained that we were astronomers studying a rare triple conjunction in the heavens. But to come so far, you must suspect some deeper significance, he says. Legend predicts a royal birth. Bolt just blurted it out. Really? Matey said, casually. And where? Precisely. He smiled, eyeing our strong box. I cut across Bolt then. We've no idea. We're only chasing the cosmic phenomenon while it lasts. Then he says his master, the king, would like to pay his respects. I doubt that very much. But Melchior assured him we would report any findings. So the next night we disguised ourselves, blindfolded Lumpy to keep him quiet and hid among some rocks. At daybreak, everyone else turned back. Herod's men, they followed. On the outskirts of Bethlehem, we paused a while the star seemed immobile. Our remaining servants recce into town discovered just a few male infants there. But how were we going to know? After nightfall, our star seemed to be separating into three. A modest house on the town's edge was oddly lit up by it. So we went and a young woman answered the door, a toddler on her hip. We introduced ourselves. The girl said, oh, Joseph, just like the shepherds. And nervously, they invited us in. They were not locals either, but hovering there on the edge, only came for the census. Jesus, the child, was born in the stable. Poor as temple mice and baffled by our incongruous regal offerings. A great king, and not just for the Jews, in that tumble-down hovel? How? As unpromising and ordinary as my lumpy old camel. And the why, the why of this impossibility. As we left them, a wave of deep compassion and fondness washed over me. For the battered old beast tethered there in the yard. The why, suddenly I knew, the why was love. The maker of the impossible. One light was shining from that child's dark eyes. I glanced up at the star, but there, strangely now, I could see only two. How long, I wonder, might impossibly distant stars or planets take to converge above a single point on the Earth's surface? And how long for stargazers to project such an event? Years and years, decades or more. And oh, the painstaking calculations, dedication and inspiration. Matthew's mysterious magi came from somewhere in the east, possibly from the direction of Iran, where such priestly figures were recorded by ancient historians. Frustratingly, we cannot identify the travellers further. Even their supposed names are from much later writings. 
But they were not mere observers. They were searching for pattern and meaning in the affairs of humankind. Surely history couldn't just be one random thing after another. Even if Israel's one true God was unknown to them at the outset, the hypnotic mystery of the spheres and some barely imaginable loving wisdom behind it all drew them into a long, risky and jolly uncomfortable expedition through their costly endeavour soon after Jesus' birth an improbable bridge was formed. As Israel's great I Am finally squeezed himself through the tiniest opportunity into his own world, he opened the humblest of doorways to welcome not just his own, but all humanity. Through all his years of studying and across all those bumpy miles, Caspar and his colleagues had been waiting. Waiting for what?